Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to cover gradient descent algorithm. So let's get started. Okay, so first, what is gradient descent? So gradient descent is an optimization algorithm that is used to obtain the optimized network weights and bias values. So you guys remember from the previous lecture is that in order to train the artificial neural network, we want to get, we are going to use the training data so here we have our inputs, here we have our desired output, the network will generate predictions, we're going to calculate the error signal, and now the problem basically lies in, okay, how can I use that error signal to go back and update the weights? And that's the magic, that's the magic of gradient descent algorithm. So basically what we're going to do here, that we're going to calculate what we call the gradient, okay, which is simply the derivative of my cost function, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that gradient to think of this as kind of guide the algorithm to reach our minimum error or to reach the optimized values of all the weights and the biases. Think of this as, as, as if you are, for example, here standing on, let's say, for example, a mountain, for example, and you want to reach the bottom. You want to reach the minimum point here, which is the center here. So what you do is that you start to basically calculate the gradient and start to descend, just to go down and down and down and you keep going, moving forward until you reach a state where basically the error is minimized and that would be the optimal value of the point and that would be the optimized values of weights and biases for our network. So gradient descent works by iteratively trying to minimize the cost function and it works by calculating the gradient of the cost function and start to move in the negative direction until the local or global minimum is achieved. Obviously, we would love to have the uh, global minimum, but sometimes the algorithm might be stuck in what we call it a local minimum, which means I might have, for example, like this might be might not be the minimum. Maybe somewhere else I might have a more of a minimum value somewhere else. Okay, so our objective is to try to find the global minimum and try to avoid being stuck in a local minimum and that's what we call it a local minima problem. Simply put, what we do is that we calculate what we call the negative of the gradient and we try to move in the negative direction of the gradient. Simply put, to write to, and that's why we call it descent, we try to go down, right? So if you use the positive of the gradient, then you will achieve what we call the global maximum. And that's again, we're not going to be using this. Generally put, in any machine learning uh, algorithm, we try to find the local, uh, we try to find the global minimum. We try to minimize basically the error as much as possible. So let's go ahead and see the gradient descent algorithm in details. But before we do that, let's take a look at an important term, which is known as learning rate, okay? Th learning rate simply is how aggressive you want it to learn, how aggressive you want it to update the weights. Okay, and simply put, learning rate is the size of the steps taken to update the weights. If you want to be aggressive, if you want to just go crazy and learn very, very fast, you can adjust the learning rate to be high. So if you increase the learning rate, that means you will move much faster. So you can actually go down here much faster to try to, so you might reach the global minimum much faster. Okay, so, but there is a, obviously like a cost associated with it. So if the learning rate increases, you will find that the area covered in the search space will increase. So we actually might reach the global minimum much faster. However, the drawback of adjusting the learning rate to be very high is that you can overshoot the target. For example, if this is the, if this is the global minimum, that's the minimum point that you're looking for, and you started right there, for example, somewhere, and you adjust the learning rate to be very high, you can actually like go, go fast, 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 but you can overshoot that minimum. You can overshoot it and you can, basically you start to think of this as kind of, you're trying to like, uh, like overshooting to the right and left of your, of the point that you're looking for, which is my global minimum. And that's why sometimes we try to kind of tune the learning rate to start very, very high when we are away when we're far away, and then as we get closer to the uh, minimum point, we lower down the learning rate, we make it a little bit smaller. So for small learning rates, training will take much longer to reach optimized weight values. 
So simply put, if you have a large learning rate, you can cover the search space, a larger search space, and you can reach the global much, much faster. However, if you use a small learning rate, think of this as you are moving down the, this curve much, much slower. So it will take you much longer to achieve the what you're looking for, which is the optimized values of the weights. Okay, so let's take a look at the algorithm. So let's assume that we have a very simple um, equation, which is y equals 2b plus mx. And my objective here is to try to find the values of b and m. I'm trying to find the best model or the best values for b and m, where m is the slope of the line and b is the y-intercept. So here is my machine learning model, and let's see how can we do that. First, we start with our training data. So I know the input, I know the output, because I'm doing a supervised machine learning technique, right? So here I have my, again, in my, in my example, I know my input, I know my output, and here I have my model, and I don't know what's the value of B and M. Maybe I can start with, let's say, random numbers, three and let's say two, for example. And what the machine learning model will do, it will generate a prediction, and that's what we call it Y hat, okay? So we can cal cal calculate the difference between predictions, which is Y hat, minus the actual value, and that's what we call it the error. And then we can take the error and go back and try to update the parameters, or we can update the weights. So we can call B and M weights in this example. If you are using, let's say, an artificial neural network with weights associated with it or connecting the various neurons. Okay, so that's again how we train the, uh, the, uh, the model, any machine learning model, right? We calculate the error, we take the error, and now we want to know what are we going to do with that error, okay? So what we could do is that first we need to formulate what we call it a loss function. So a loss function or a cost function can be formulated as follows. We can simply get the error signal, which is y hat minus y actual. This is my error. For example, I can square it up, okay? I can sum all the error up for all the data points, divide and divide by the overall number of samples, okay? So simply, that's what we call it the cost function. And our objective is to try to minimize the error as much as I can. This is basically what I'm looking for, trying to minimize the loss function or the cost function as much as possible, okay? So let's take a look at the steps. So the gradient descent algorithm works as follows. First, you have to formulate your loss function, which is again, could be the predictions minus the actual, which is the error, square it up, you sum that, uh, that up, and you divide it by the overall number of samples. So first, you need to calculate the gradient or the derivative of the loss function. So now I have the loss function. Now I need to obtain the derivative. Simply, you will take that function and obtain the derivative with respect to the weights. So here, for example, if I'm looking at m and b, then I will obtain the partial derivative of this equation with respect to m and then with respect to b. Okay? So that would be the first step. The second step, I'm going to pick random values for weights m and b, and I'm going to substitute in this equation. And then step number three, I'm going to calculate what we call the step size, which is how much do I need to update the parameters. Think of this as, as follows. So my step size is equals to my learning rate times the gradient. So here I calculated the gradient. Okay. So now I can take that gradient, which is the derivative again of the loss, which is my loss function here, with respect to the weights. And if I multiply that by the learning rate, if you guys remember, Learning rate is just a number that indicates how aggressive you want it to learn, how aggressive you want to update basically the weights. So now you calculate the step size, which is alpha times the um, gradient. And once you have that, then you can go to step four and start to update the parameters. Simply put, you will take your old weights, let's say old values of M or old values of B, and then you, what you do is that you subtract the step size from it. So you say minus alpha times the, the gradient of the loss, which is what we calculated here. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to take the old weight, subtract the step size from it, and that will give me the new weight. And we'll keep repeating over and over again. And simply what we're going to see is that if you start here, for example, and if you calculate the gradient, you will find that over time, the point will gonna go here 
and then you're gonna go there and you're gonna cut the gradient again and we'll keep doing it until we reach a state where you reach the optimal point or the global minimum and that's when you try when you, that's when you stop the training because you have reached the optimized values in which the sum of squared residuals is minimized so now you have minimized the error as much as possible please note that in reality this graph is 3D, so basically I'm going to have three axes. I'm going to have one for M and one for B, and I have one for the sum of squared residuals. But here I'm just going to use it just for uh, uh, simplicity uh, sake. So again, that's gradient descent in a nutshell. Again, we start with formulating a loss function. We calculate the gradient of the loss function. We pick random values and substitute. We calculate the step size, which is simply the learning rate, times my uh, gradient and then you update the parameters you take the all weights or all the parameters you add to it or subtract from it the um, learning rate times the gradient and that will give me the new weight and you keep repeating re repeating over and over again until you reach the optimal point or the global minimum and that's all what i have for this lecture i hope you guys enjoyed it in the next lecture we're going to cover back propagation so please stay tuned and please enjoy AWS SageMaker practical course and I will see you guys in the next lecture.